Hey, what's going on guys, JMac here. So recently in my stream, a lot of people have been asking how the Kanai's cube works in patch 2.3. So I figured I'd make a quick tutorial video, that way you guys know exactly all the functions of it and how the recipes work within the cube. So first things first, when you start a game, Sultan Cool is going to be in town and you just get a quest from him by clicking on him. And uh, what that's going to do is he's going to send you to the brand new zone in Act 3, the Ruins of Seshiron right here. You'll go there, there'll be a zone within the zone called the Elder Sanctum. Once you find that, go inside, then explore it, and once you get to the end, there's going to be like a ghost barbarian dude there. Talk to him, and the Kanai's cube will be there on a ledge, and then Zoltan Cool will show up, and you'll be able to click the cube, and then it'll uh, be put in the town for you, just like this, as another artisan that you can then click on, and then get the various functions from the cube. The first recipe is by far the most powerful and game-changing, the Archive of Tal Rasha, Extract Legendary Power. So what you need is a legendary item with a special power, and the special power is any legendary with the orange text. So that's the part of the legendary that you're extracting into the cube. And then you need these five crafting materials, which these drop from Heradric Caches from each Axe Bounty Bags. So you have to complete all five axe bounties to have enough crafting materials to extract a legendary power. And then you need five death's breath as well. And once you put all that in there, you hit transmute, and then it'll extract it. And then you're able to go over here into a drop down menu and see every legendary power that you've extracted and then click them and equip them inside the cube. Now currently you can have one weapon, one armor, and one jewelry power equipped at a time. And they're basically like having three new passives, really. So like currently, I can have the Star Metal Kukri within the cube, so I'm getting this effect while having a Dagger of Darts equipped to my character. So my Fetish's darts and my darts are piercing, and I'm also getting the effect of the SMK, so that my Big Bad Voodoo is basically permanent, which is extremely powerful. And then as far as the armor one goes, I'm running Mask of Jerem currently for 100% more pet damage in Carnival, and then I can run a Ring of Royal Grandeur in the jewelry slot, and run focus and restraint over here on my character. Extremely, extremely powerful and uh, will push a lot of builds much, much higher than they're going in patch 2.2. So we'll go ahead and put one in here just to show you exactly how it works and what it looks like. Now items like this that have a range to their legendary power, they will always have the highest range within the cube. So if we put this into the cube, it'll have an 80,000 life per hit if we were to use it from the cube. So we'll put that in along with some death's breath, and then all of the, the other crafting materials that we need. We hit transmute here. It'll ask you if that's what you want to do. You go ahead and hit extract the power anyway. And bam, there you go, new power extracted. So it does destroy the legendary, so keep that in mind. You don't want to, probably don't want to go extract an ancient SMK or an ancient dagger of darts unless you've got one that's better than the one you're extracting, but just keep that in mind. So then you can go to the drop down menu, and there it is. The coils of the first spider can now be equipped as a passive within the cube. Alright, next up we have the Law of Cool, Reforge Legendary. So you need a legendary item, five of each of these crafting materials from the, the Karadric Caches, and then 50 Forgotten Souls. This one's pretty expensive, but can be potentially very powerful. Say you drop a Star Metal Kukri or a Dagger of Darts or something that rolls terribly, you can re-roll it and potentially roll it into an ancient one and it could be crazy, it could be insane, but you got to keep that in mind that if you re-roll, say you, you roll a bad ancient dagger of darts and you go to re-roll it, it can re-roll as non-ancient. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to re-roll one of my bad ancient dagger of darts just to show you guys that it can roll down to non-ancient. So we've got this dagger of darts here that's just worse than the one that I'm currently wearing, unfortunately. We'll go ahead and throw that in there along with the crafting materials that we need and then 50 Forgotten Souls, and again, if you put more crafting materials into the cube than you need, it'll just use the ones that uh, you have to have for the recipe. It won't use any extra, so you can just put stacks of crafting materials into the cube for this kind of thing, that way you don't have to break them apart. So we're going to hit Transmute, and what do we get? A terrible non-ancient Dagger of Darts. So there you go, just keep that in mind, but potentially this is really, really crazy Especially for people that maybe have never seen an ancient star metal kukri. You've got those weapons that are very, very rare. And then trying to get an ancient one on top of that rarity is very tough. So uh, this potentially gives you a way to do it without actually having to drop it. Pretty great. 
The third recipe is Hope of Cain, upgrade a rare item. So you take a rare equipable level 70 item, and it does basically what it says. You upgrade a rare item to a legendary of the same type. You need 25 Death's Breath, 50 Reusable Parts, 50 Arcane Dust, and 50 Veiled Crystal. Let's go ahead and put in a rare mojo with the Reusable Parts, Veiled Crystal, Arcane Dust, and Death's Breath. Hit Transmute, and there you go. We got a thing of the deep from our rare mojo. So, pretty cool overall. Uh, early on in the season, you may not have the crafting mats to do this, but once you have a lot of crafting mats, you can kind of gamble this way a little bit if you want to. Moving on to the fourth recipe, the skill of Nilfer. Convert set item. So all you need is a set item, 10 Death's Breath, and 10 Forgotten Souls. This is one of the cheaper recipes here. Basically what it does is it'll take any set item and then convert it to another piece of that set. So here we've got the chest piece. We'll go ahead and put that in there with Forgotten Soul times 10 and... Death's Breath times 10, hit Transmute, and then bam, it turned it into the boots. Now these can roll either Ancient or Non-Ancient from this. We'll do it again for a good measure. So go ahead and pop these in there. Bam, that time we get Pants. Um, now, you, currently you're able to do this with the two-piece weapon sets as well. But I think they've talked about potentially not allowing that to be the case just because it's kind of abusable because it's really easy to get an Ancient of both that way just because you're only rolling, you know, there's only two options if it's a two-piece set whereas most of the other sets are six pieces so uh, that makes a little bit more sense overall for this particular recipe. But I like this quite a bit. There's a lot of times, you know, when you start a new season or even, you know, before seasons where people had that one piece of a set that they just couldn't get. You know, they had like four or five of the gloves or four or five of the boots, but they just couldn't get that chest piece or they just couldn't get that pair of pants. So now you're able to roll, say, you know, your fifth pair of boots into a pair of pants with this recipe. The fifth recipe is Work of Cathan, Remove Level Requirement. So you need an equipable item and then a rank 25 plus gem of ease. So for the demonstration in the video, we've got a furnace here that required level is 70. So we're going to put that in along with a level 25 plus gem of ease. We're going to hit transmute and then bam, required level one. So you're able to use this from level one. Um, you know, more than likely, this is going to be for leveling alts uh, just because you need a high level gem of ease to do it. But it's pretty cool that you can use a very, very powerful weapon from level 1 if you want to, to just power level yourself a little bit. Um, as quickly as you can power level now in a group, you can just you know stand in a greater rift and have your buddies power level you. I'm not sure how relevant that's really going to be. Alright, moving on to recipe 6, Darkness of Radiment, Convert Gems. So you need any gem times 9 and then select one of the following. Uh, so if you want to create Amethyst, you need to get the Essence of Amethyst. You want to create emeralds, you need the essence of emerald, etc. And you get the essences from Squirt the Peddler here in Act 2. Uh, you go to the miscellaneous tab, and then you'll see that she's selling all the different essences for each type of gem here. So go ahead and snag just an essence of emerald to showcase this. Go back over here, put it back on the screen. And then we're going to put in Marquis Topaz along with the essence of emerald, and you can put as much as big of a stack as you want into the cube it's still only going to convert nine of these topaz into emeralds no matter how big the stack is so we'll hit transmute and bam there you go you see it converted nine of those into emeralds for us so there was a lot of times that you would have issues with a specific type of gem especially if you're trying to re-roll jewelry because you know a lot of times jewelry would tend to be like topaz especially for witch doctors i felt like the majority of the time when i was re-rolling rings they always wanted topaz but then i also wanted to craft topaz into higher level gems to socket into my gear so that seemed to be kind of a problem a lot of the time so this takes care of that you can convert the gems that you aren't using into the ones that you want to use recipe seven anger of ibn fod convert crafting mats so you need times 100 of either white, blue, or yellow crafting mats, and then a normal magic or rare equipable item, and then one death's breath. And you're able to turn, you know, a lot of times you have a ton of yellow crafting mats, but you don't have a lot of arcane dust, for instance, which is a problem that if you played any amount of Reaper of Souls, you've probably ran into that at some point in time. So you can then turn those arcane dust into Veiled Crystals, Veiled Crystals and Arcane Dust, same thing with reusable parts. We're going to turn 
100 veiled crystal into 100 reusable parts for demonstration here. So we've got the white weapon that's equipable. We're going to put that in there along with 100 veiled crystal. And again, you can put as big of a stack as you want to. It'll just take 100 of these and a death's breath. And then hit transmute and bam, there you go. 100 reusable parts. One other thing that's actually not listed in the cube is that if you take a puzzle ring and put that into the cube and then transmute it, it'll actually open up a goblin portal in town, the goblin uh, vault. So you actually don't even have to find that from killing a goblin anymore. As long as you just get a puzzle ring, you can do that. So there you go, guys. I think the cube overall is going to bring a lot of really cool things to the game. I like that a lot of the frustrations that we've had in Seasons and in Reaper of Souls in general, like being starved for arcane dust or specific gems, or not being able to drop that one set item that we really need, uh, the, hopefully the cube kind of remedies all that stuff and makes the game just much more enjoyable overall so we don't have to farm for things that aren't fun to farm for and uh, get us back to doing the stuff that we really like doing in the game. And obviously that first recipe where you extract legendary powers is going to be insane for build diversity. Now keep in mind, I mean, in a game like this, the very top tier difficulties, people are still going to gravitate towards very cookie cutter builds more than likely. They're going to play what's best. That's just kind of how that is when you're trying to compete and be the best at something. Uh, they're going to play what's best. And most of the time that ends up being just like maybe one or two specs. But uh, as far as like the mid-tier difficulties, which I think the majority of casual players are at, there should be a ton of build diversity with this cube and make for some really, really fun builds, especially for speed farming, torment levels, and things like that. So anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helped you. If it did, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.